We are back here in the Crimson Ghost Mask Room for this lovely October 2023, bringing you monster mask videos from days of old. Uh, so, um, today, we're gonna sh I'm going to show you I got some incredible pieces in the mail today that showed up um, not only from a secret foam filling laboratory somewhere near the Hollywood Hills, but also an amazing custom piece by Mr. Matt McNeil. Oh my God. I own a couple of other pieces by Matt, but they are blank castings of some of his Fright Night pieces. I never got my hands on one of Matt's personal finished copies. However, that all changed this past week. I told Matt, I go, if any come available with this latest one, I gotta have it. And he goes, I think one is available. And I got it. So let's see. Where do we? We'll, we'll start off with Matt's piece because it's so spectacular. I cannot start by showing you this crazy thing. It is uh, Fright Night is one of my favorite films of all time, um, no doubt. And when I took note, when I noticed uh, the great pieces that Matt was producing of these characters, I had to get my hands on at least some castings that are in the works right now with one of the best painters in the whole hobby. They're actually in the works right now being painted by some of, uh, being painted by one of the best painters there is. Um, more on that later, but I'm gonna show you, I got a copy of, I got a copy of Matt's Jerry Dandridge and uh, oh my God, it's so cool. So let's start off by showing you this amazing piece and then I'm gonna show you some classic rare masks that showed up from being foam filled and we're gonna talk about them in this video. So here we go. I'm balancing this camera on a werewolf's head, so if it's a little crooked, you're gonna know why. All right, that should be, ah! Wow. All right, here it is. Oh my God, look at this. A little closer. Matt McNeil, you've done it again, you son of a gun. So Matt, those of you that aren't familiar with Matt McNeil, uh, he has been making hands down some of the greatest, I'm not gonna say some of, I'm just gonna say the greatest Fright Night pieces that have ever been produced. Okay, um, there have been attempts over the years by artists like Harry Inman and, and others out there that have made Fright Night pieces, but good God, man, Matt McNeil, you've done it. You've created these beautiful lifelike versions of characters we all know and love in this hobby. Um, I have Matt's Evil Ed and his Amy in blank form. Those blanks uh, of mats I have in the hands of one of the top painters in all of the Hollywood special effects makeup world, Mr. Eric De La Vega. And he is going to paint them up proper. And then they're gonna go off for the hair jobs of their life. Something like that. So, but I finally got my hands on one of Matt's finished pieces ah! his Jerry Dandridge their Jerry Dandridge piece here completed by Matt meaning not only the sculpt but finished clothing hair paint uh, paint hair eyes the whole works all done by Matt um he's got these amazing eyes for all of his characters um that are just out of this world by fourth seal and uh, there's something special about these, though, that I'm going to show you, because um, Matt sent me some footage. These eyes just don't look spectacular. They also have a little twist to them. So check this out. When the black lights hit them, his eyes glow in the dark. Boom. They freaking glow. Oh, my God, is that cool? Those of you that uh, have one of Matt's amazing Jerry Dandridge pieces, 
You don't know that Matt made mine just a little better than all yours. He sent me the one of one copy that came with the incredible, amazing rubber pencil. Look at it, look at it. You don't have that with yours. Look at it, it's rubber. I love it, I love it. The box was on the porch today. I'm like, what the heck is that? Because there's all kinds of boxes out there. And I saw Matt's name on it and I was like, oh boy, I got all fired up. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna take the camera down, show you Mr. Dandrich up close and personal. Look at this sucker. Arr, I can hear him like making his noises right now. You gotta have faith for it to work, Charlie. Look at this awesome base. What is that, like 3D printed? That's freaking awesome. Or if he would sell me other bases like this for my other pin. I don't know. I'll have to ask. But this thing is so cool. Look at his great teeth. I feel like he's going to bite my finger. Those eyes are killer. I think, I think, may, I'm not, don't quote me here, but I think Fourth Seal Studio made all of the eyes for, like, I don't think they existed before Matt's projects, maybe? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm... I could be wrong, though, but they now make these great eyes for the characters from Fright Night. You can get different versions as well on the Amy, especially. So, just look at the... Look at the great quality on this thing. Killer. Life-size, one-of-one scale. Even feels like a pleather jacket. You know, something Jerry would wear to the club. Man, there's like sweat on him. Like he's, uh, you know, really pissed off and ready to kill Ch good old Charlie. What a great, great piece. Let's turn it. This is just awesome. I was kind of messing with his hair because it was all matted down from shipping. But uh, I got it puffed out somewhat i'm still gonna screw around with that and get it get it looking as best as i i can get it but man i had to start off this video with showing you this crazy piece by matt mcneil follow matt um he is no doubt a amazing an amazing talent in this whole hobby look at that crazy thing i can't wait i think i may actually have I may actually have updated photos from Eric on the other two pieces. I'm going to check in my phone before I put this video, video together. If I do, I'm going to show you those right now on the screen. Wow. that's This is getting exciting. He's had them for a while. I said, no hurry, man. I'm super busy with all kinds of stuff here. So, uh, <laughs> you know, when you get to him, you get to him. So he's really, uh, they're really taking shape now. All right. Now. I'm going to put this camera back in its place and I'm going to show you some important pieces that came back from getting foam filled. Um, these went to a private friend of mine who, who will fill things for me and he, he does not fill for many other people at all. So I unfortunately cannot put his name out there in his email because he's not taking on new clients. But uh, thank goodness he's still taking the time to foam important pieces I send him because they need to be preserved. He, know, he knows that, I know that, and uh, he is the best when it comes to foam filling. So, let's get old Jerry Dandridge off the table, and I'm going to show you some great stuff. All right, look at these. Man, so these, uh, you've seen these on some previous videos this uh, earlier, probably in like September, and uh, October, of course, I showed you October 1st. I talked about the great Mad Doctor from the Calendar Master Mold. Now he is completely foam filled with beautiful shape to him. And uh, he is ready to be pres And now he is able to live a very long life of being preserved for whoever ends up with this someday. You know, when I am long out of this hobby and gone from this planet where will this guy end up you know i think about these things like i gotta preserve them and make sure these will live on i'm hoping 
this channel is going to grab younger people, the younger generation that really had no clue what any of this stuff was. If it grabs a couple of kids out there that end up loving it so much that they want to collect these old, old heads from the 70s and 60s and the 80s, to me, that is going to be incredible because I hate to see all of this just fizzle away, you know, like the Ford Model T, like all of those old timers are barely here anymore and those cars have just plummeted in value and nobody wants them nobody wants a 1930 ford model t with its wooden spoke wheels and no everyone wants to chop them up and make street rods out of them nobody wants the original looking cars unless he's a weird dude <laughs> but i'm just saying like when people that love this type of stuff that were there in the day when these were being produced and they were kids and they loved them and now they want them because they're older and they can afford them. At some point, that all goes away because all of those people are no longer around. Then what happens? You know, it all fizzles away at some point. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping somebody out there in this younger generation is going to take note of what I'm doing here with this channel. Enough babbling. These great castings, all created in the early 80s, um, you know, are now beautifully foam-filled. From the Hunchback to Mr. Hyde here, the rare David Smith alien. We're going to take him out and look at him, but I just want to show you how beautifully filled these are now. And they are going to be preserved for a long time. You know, one issue that kills an old mask is gravity and there's nothing you can do keep it stuffed as much as possible of course but if you don't grab you know gravity is the number one killer of masks and uh a good 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 example of this is this extremely rare wolf man okay keep in mind i've done a lot of heat treatments to this guy but his face, his literal upper lip area, his face, his eyes. Frank did not have him stuffed, okay? He was just sitting on a wig head. And in, in time, it all oozed. Like, the side of his face oozed down. You can still see that the lip is a little, little crooked there, like the lower lip. I've been really getting it back to shape. But man, when I first saw this mask, it looked a lot better then many years, then 10 years later, when it was just, oh, it just killed me to see what gravity was doing to this mask. So anybody out there that tells you foam filling is not good or it ruins masks, they're out of their minds. Hello, the Vern Langdon zombie. This 1972 Vern Langdon zombie would not be sitting here in front of me if it were not foam filled back in 83. This is probably the number one example of how foam filling is beneficial to the preservation of a mask this thing is so delicate if you felt this thing you know it's like a a thick eggshell almost it's you know he's okay but you drop this on the floor forget it you know and this thing if he was not foam filled he would have either crumbled to pieces gravity would have melted him until he just completely sagged into a pile of flat goo but no he was filled back in 83 by the same man that filled these masks just last week for me isn't that nuts anyway that good old hunchback these are custom castings now at least these two okay these two guys are custom castings this guy is straight out of the well i mean he's considered a custom casting but he's from the calendar mold these guys i'm not quite sure if they are from factory don post molds or if they were from a recasted mold from those really old late 60s early 70s molds by the look by the size of these i would say they are factory mold copies um it's, it's so tough not not being there and not knowing unless I find the guy out there that actually did this back in the day. I'll never know the complete backstory on, but they are exquisite examples of these masks. Um, 
some of the best I've ever seen. Okay. And in recent years, in recent years, I had Rob Tharp and Kathy Tharp work on one for me. Where is he? Here he is, this dude. So let's just get this guy out. <sighs> so take a look at that side by side. I'm looking at size here. This one is a lot skinnier in the face, like shrunken down. This is by the Tharps now, okay? This is pretty much a one of a kind that I had Rob and Kathy do like the old 1972 catalog image. But this looks like it's a generation down from that one over there. You know, it's so tough. I'd have to really do measurements and put them nose to nose. But I would love to know more about these two castings on the left and on the right. All right, let's move these guys out of the way. They're ready to go back in their spaces up here. And uh, let's do that right now. Before I put him, before I put him back on the shelf, when Frank had this guy displayed for many years, he had a little hat on top of his head. It looked like a little pilgrim hat. Um, I'm gonna put I wanted to put this on him just to see how this looked on him before I put him back on the shelf. Because I may clean this hat up. And in Frank's memory, display him with this hat. Look at that. That is wild. That looks really cool. Look at that. That completely changed this piece. Isn't that neat? Hmm. Well, Frank, you were on to something there, man. That is a really cool way to display this Mr. Hyde. It only makes sense, right? Will he fit on that shelf like that? We will see. Wow. <laughs> that is that is cool. See what I mean when I talk about Frank doing the clothes and little details and it just changes things. You know, that's not the hat Frank had. But man, that is cool. I think he needs to stay like that. Don't you guys agree? It just, look how it stands alone on that shelf. Like it's like, man, look at that thing. So cool. It's so nice to have these back. It's nerve wracking sending something like this across the country through these horrible <laughs> carriers these days that either damage boxes or they lose them, they misplace them. So it freaks you out sending something that you could never replace ever. And some idiot out there just decides to steal the package or it's lost or, you know, it gets smashed. It makes you sick. Anyway, back to the old David Smith alien. Look at that. Thank goodness this was able to be foam filled because he was very thin, very thin latex rubber. And uh, my buddy goes, I don't know. He's pretty thin. But let's give it a shot and it actually turned out really great and the good thing the thing about my friend that foams these he is so good about retaining the shape of the mask you know some people foam stuff and they come out quite distorted he really is good at making things look the way they're supposed to and i mean like why do it if it's going to come out like a uh, baked potato wrinkly and messed up this looks awesome what a rare rare david smith mask it's gonna go back on the independent wall over here got yeah, one more that came back from foam filling let's check them out i said there was one more that came back from foam filling i was lying there were two. Oh my god so this is an incredible 83 Karloff that surfaced recently and it was priced pretty steep on eBay But the more I looked at it. It was an exceptional copy for an 83. It was gorgeous You could tell it was it was tagged. I have to add the tag back to it During the full filling process tags must be removed So I have the little little thing I got to put back on it and I'll put the tag back where it was but I sat there staring at this thing on eBay and I said, you know what? 83 Karloffs 
are kind of seeming to thin out in the hobby. They're not surfacing like they used to. I used to see them quite often, and uh, seeing them in this condition is like almost non-existent these days. I thought about it good and hard, and I said, man, it's gorgeous. It's a factory Don Post Frankenstein mask, Frankenstein monster mask, tagged, unworn, you know, it became a no-brainer in the end. Like, what are you doing? Buy that thing, have it filled, and preserve it. Because it is, uh, it's something that I think is going to be harder and harder to find in years to come, you know? Very, very nice example here, though. And uh, that's its original hang tag. And now, this brings us to this incredible creature from the Black Lagoon here. You're, you're probably staring at this like, is that a reissue? 98 reissue? No, it is not. This, my friends, is a very special one. This is the Bill Malone sculpt. It was, you know, Bill Malone re-sculpted the creature into the creature B around 1969, I believe. Um, so the creature A was no more. They came out with the creature B, which was larger. And uh, this particular casting, this particular, this particular casting is straight from the Don Post Master Mold. The Bill Malone Master. So this is a master pull. In the original factory master master mold and the detailing is insane and this particular copy was painted by none other than rick stratton um it used to have the silver eyes in it frank this was from the frankenstein frank had them removed like it literally cut out and these eyes put in its place um he just, I just, he just wanted those lenses instead of the old, you know, silvery-eyed look that the Bill Malone creature is is known for. You know, that creature B. So, I'm going to show you. This is, uh, this is a different mask. This is a 1998 reissue. I'm going to show you the difference now in size. Look at that. Huh? <laughs> look at that. Big, big, big difference in the size going from the master the original master down to a 98 production version of that mask we're going to talk about this mask much later in another video because this is quite special it has a special signature on it. this was gifted to me recently more on that later right now we're talking about this rare casting this is this is extremely rare I'm sure there probably is a few others out there that were created back in the day, but uh, it's so awesome that Frank had this sitting in the shelves of his old bedroom, and uh, I knew it was something special when I saw it. I just didn't know how special. Look at the difference in the detailing. Look at that. That is night and day absolutely awesome <clears throat> so that um this is one i've been really wanting to talk about with you guys there's two other amazing creatures from frank's that are here i think we already talked about that one for sure after he gets foam filled soon we'll discuss him but uh so thrilled that this thing is sitting here all right thank you for watching this quick video and uh Next will be the final episode on the Halloween Society pieces. So get ready. We're going to talk about the last few pieces in my collection from the Halloween Society. I have all but three pieces that were ever made. Like, so there was, I think there were 14 Halloween Society pieces created. I have all but three. I will, I will make sure those numbers are right. But um, get ready for the next video because we are going to talk about those last three and then and then we will see where this takes us next for the month of october 2023